Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. And in this clip, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the rig. And as you all know, if you've been through the intro to rigging in Maya 2017 course, this is Hugo Gruffman, and we created this rig in that course. And what I really want, I don't wanna go over everything, every control, because we will, we will talk about that when we start animating, but I did wanna mention a couple of things. First off, we have nothing but F or IK functionality in the feet. In the, in the in the legs. However, we do have space switching, and we have to. We're going to want to deal with that, and that is uh, basically what that means is not so much in the feet, but in the knees. The uh, knee pull vector control can follow different controls. Right now, they're keyed to follow the foot. Okay, so if you raise the foot, and this follows. However, we do have the ability to change that and to either let it follow the cog which is this control, or the world, which is actually this control, the translate control. Now, if it follows the world, it means that nothing that you do in the figure is going to, cha is going to change that's position, which means you're going to have to account for it for every pose that you build. And something really bad can happen. Actually, it's not really bad, but it does look kind of weird. If this passes beyond the uh, base of the IK, the leg IK, it will twist or it will flip, which is a problem. So what we're going to do for our purposes is we are going to change this to and make it follow the feet as it's as it is. Some of the others we are going to change. And what that will do, that means we will still have to uh, we, we will still have to, to change this, but we don't rotate our feet controllers very much in this in this particular uh, exercise, so it's good to leave the, the knee as is. The same thing is true for the elbows. Now, the elbow is a little different because the elbow, the way things are set up right now, the elbow PVs are set to follow the wrist, and the wrist is set to follow the collar. What that does is that makes this very FK function, very FK-like, meaning that it will work uh, pretty much to follow the um, follow our the, the collarbone, and that is not ideal because the collarbone follows everything. So everything you do in the upper body, the arm is going to follow. So what I'm going to suggest is that we change this and have it follow the world. And the reason for that is rarely. I mean, when when we are animating we're going to want these arms to stay in place. Now we can all, we can uh, we can change that at the big, if we decide we we don't want that at the start of this, but for right now really let's go ahead and try it with this following the world. And then this will follow I want the I'm going to want the elbow PVs to follow the world too. And what this will do this will mean that we will have to move the whole arm for every pose. See, that rotates the elbow, okay? And we can zero that out. Same thing here. Let's have them all, let's have this follow the world. It will be a true IK functionality. All right, so now what that means is every time we move or rotate the collar, okay, we will have to move if we want this to follow. Now, we can change that. This this rig does have functionality. If you are more, if you believe that you can animate more effectively using FK functionality, these two crosses right here, we can shift select both of them, will change our functionality. Once it goes to ten, it will go to FK IK, and it will switch to an IK to an FK arrangement. FK means that you have to rotate pretty much everything to meet the desired pose. It is a little bit easier to meet the desired pose using FK in the arms. We're not in a situation where, ever, where we're going to want to plant the arm or plant the hand in place. So it is possible to do it with this. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to want to stick, with, uh, stick with, with IK. It's a little harder to get arcs in the swing of the arms, but it does. it, it is a... Um, it's going to be easier to create the poses overall. And more importantly, it's also going to make it easier to put in uh, the lag and overshoot later when we when we decide we want to do that. Now, as far as the head, head, head uh, is concerned, you can follow the world. Right now, it's set to follow the neck. And what that means is right now, if I rotate the neck, that's good. 
But if I change that, now the head will not follow. The head will not follow the 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 neck. It will stay it will stay pointed to a particular to a particular place. Again, I'm going to leave this to follow. I'm going to leave the head to follow the neck, but that's something I just wanted to make you aware of that. Same thing with the eyes. I'm going to leave the eyes in, as they are. Follow, which is basically following the head. Okay, zero is head. Zero is always to the left, and then world is is to the right. So that means that if I rotate the body, the eyes stay in place. It's kind of cool, but I'll go ahead and oops, change that back to zero. Okay, so this gives you a kind of an idea on the functionality of the rig and w how we're going to begin our efforts here. Now we may change that. I might change that as we start to build this, in which case I'll show you the process by which you can change this. Now, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my timeline. I'm going to go on 24 frames per second because that divides so easily, evenly and so nicely into halves and quarters and, and eighths, which is what we're going to use for our uh, for creating this. So anyway, this is basically an introduction to the rig. What we're going to do next is we are going to set up uh, some scripts and set up a, a shelf and some controls for our, uh, basically for Gruffman.